having I'm having issues, everyone. I'm having issues. Well, it is now cold in LA here for hashtag no filter Friday on public house media. And as opposed to tea, because I'm kind of in need of a tea talks, I want to go with water this week because that's where I'm at in my life. I'm in a onesie drinking smart water on a Friday night. As opposed to um, sitting at my desk and uh, drinking tea. Oops, wrong way. So this week is all about, we're kind of doing like a two for show. We're gonna try this out and like see how it works. So it has been announced that A, the SAG Awards this year are gonna have all lady presenters. I was like, well, that's kind of interesting. Some of the news outlets were reporting it's because, um, of all of the sexual misconduct and assault allegations in Hollywood, they're um, they're gonna have it be all all the presenters are gonna be ladies, as a way to celebrate women and put women first. Supposedly, that's what they said. And then the woman that's putting on the SAG Awards said that it is a year of women, and for. To celebrate ladies and all of the SAG members agree, which I don't remember voting on that, but I'm not a super good SAG member, so maybe I didn't vote on it. <clears throat> that um, normally when you present for the SAG Awards, it's an actor and an actress and they present the category together. And this year, they didn't really say if it's going to be two actresses or if it's just going to be one or they're going to trade off or whatever they're going to do, but it's going to be all ladies for all the categories up to and including the red carpet pre-show they're presenting the um the stunt categories and then who else morgan freeman is getting a lifetime achievement award so someone's going to be presenting that to him and then they also said that um they also said that who else is getting an award Someone else also important is getting an award. And um, to introduce the clips, they are they are going to have um, male nominees presenting clips with other things in them. So it's not going to be a total lady show, which is fine, whatever. But it's interesting to me that they're like, oh, it's for women's empowerment and to put women up front and this, that, and the other thing. But honestly, I think it's so if nothing comes out between now and then that they don't have to kick somebody off the roster because at the rate that things are going like one a day, three times a week, there's new allegations coming out against someone. And I'm pretty sure they're trying to hedge their bets on their presenters and things like that. Much like night of too many stars had to get rid of Louis CK. So they're probably trying to, um, I need another pillow. They're probably trying to get to a place where they can firm up everyone that is presenting. They can do their rehearsal. They can do all of their announcements, all of their press, and not have to worry because it's a bunch of ladies presenting. Um, so hopefully none of the nominees will have anything come out against them in that time, which would really, really be terrible. But now that like House of Cards is out of the way and House of Cards, um, Danny Masterson got kicked off of the ranch. Not that they were going to get SAG Awards anyway, but <clears throat> you never know. Um, so people are getting... Actors are getting, actors are getting cut off and shows are getting cut off. Speaking of shows getting cut off, animals, enough. Bunch of crazy nuggets. So 
Speaking of people getting cut off um, and shows getting canceled, a incredible shock to me came out the other day about my dear, sweet, adorable friend, TJ Miller. Some chick came out against TJ Miller and the way the media reported it was that some animated show that he was working on, I think at Comedy Central or HBO or something like that, um, either got canceled or didn't get picked up and then the network said that no, 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 it had nothing to do with like sexual misconduct allegations, we were going to cancel it or get rid of it anyway, which is kind of crazy to me because TJ is doing really, really, really well for himself. Um, if you don't know who TJ Miller is, this is TJ. Um, you probably know him from Deadpool or about a million other things. He's worked on so many things over the years. He was doing really, really well with um, animated stuff, doing voiceover. He did Yogi Bear, How to Train Your Dragon, One, Two, and a Million because he's done tons of them so far. And then he does the Mucinex commercials. I think he had AT&T commercials for a while. Like, really been killing it. And, of course, the piece to resistance, Silicon Valley, which he left. And then had, like, a whole big brouhaha with HBO. So, there was a, there was a bunch of different ways the story about TJ came out. And... Much like last week when I saw Carter Oosterhaus, I was like, really? Another friend of mine? Like, I've been friends with TG for years. Like, Sundance is coming up. <clears throat> and years ago, I think the first time I went to Sundance, I ran, to, I ran into TG on the street. And I was like, oh, my God. Hey, what are you doing here? Because at the time, he was just, like, my neighbor. Um, he lived in, like, the sister building to mine. And we shared a concierge. And... It was, like, right after he did, like, Yogi Bear and stuff like that. He had something else. He had some movie at Sundance. I forget what it was. But I remember everybody went to go see Troll Hunters and, like, a bunch of shorts. But we had this dinner at High Noon. High Noon? No. High West. High West Distillery. If you go to Park City, if you go to Sundance, go to High West Distillery. It's super fun. So <clears throat> to give you an idea of what kind of guy TJ Miller is... He was like, I'm having this private dinner. You, I, my friend Angela was with me from Canada. Um, come over. And then he texted me later and he was like, okay, like, what time should we have the dinner? And I was, is 7.30 cool? I'm like, yeah, 7.30. I don't care. Like, we'll come through whenever. <clears throat> so he invited, like, I don't know, 12 or 15 people. Like, we had this big, long table. And we got there, and he's like, everybody was late, and I called everyone, and I asked them what time they could be here, and then I made the reservation, and then I was sitting here by myself, and everyone was late, and he was so upset about it. He was so upset about it. He's gotten a little less upset about things over the years, but TJ is, like, the sweetest, most adorable guy, so when I saw that TJ Miller is denying sexual assault allegations. I was like, Lord have mercy. Like, this is getting crazy. Just absolute craziness. So apparently, oh, he was also in the Emoji movie, but, you know, whatever. According to, it is not in this Variety report. It's in another, it's in the Daily Beast and multiple other places now. But apparently, so this chick that he's known forever came out anonymously, wouldn't give her name to the press, and said that back in college over a decade ago, um, he sexually assaulted her and choked her on two occasions, I guess. That's what she said. She was like, yeah, um, he did things to me without my consent. And he choked me. He never asked me if I was okay. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, okay, first of all, if you cannot give your name, how on earth is anybody supposed to deny, confirm or deny allegations brought upon them if you're making this big press storm, but you yourself won't? You won't name yourself, but you'll name other people. Like, how do you even, how does anybody even go about dealing with this? <clears throat> and then I did some more 
thinking about TJ, thinking about TJ's wife, Kate, and thinking about, hmm, what's going on here? And then I read this variety report. Go away, people commenting on my Facebook. On this variety report. And it says, in the Daily Beast article, a woman who asked to remain anonymous said that Miller became violent with her during a sexual encounter back in 2001. We started to fool around and, and very early in that he put his hands around my throat, closed them, and I couldn't breathe, she told the Daily Beast. I was genuinely terrified and completely surprised. But you're anonymous. So how on earth is anybody supposed to, like, confirm or deny this? Well, this is how it gets confirmed or denied. Kate and TJ both, they're married now. They've been married for a couple years. Um, Kate and TJ both are like, oh, yeah. She doesn't have to name her name. We remember this chick. Um, we went to school with her. And they were in some comedy group together that had, it was like kind of like a, kind of like an improv troupe or something. And apparently, um, where is my other page? Um, so apparently this girl was, she was asked to leave our university comedy group because of worrisome and disturbing, disturbing behavior, which angered her immensely. Then she became fixated on a relationship and began telling people around campus, I'm going to destroy them. I'm going to ruin them. Really? seriously with all of the things going on with all of the people in this town that actually have like real actual problems this is what gets brought up <clears throat> so the story goes so this is the first time in all of these sexual misconduct allegations that a husband and wife have put out a statement together which is what makes this um super super unique because so far, no one's wives or partners or girlfriends or anything have um, come out in their...